Hey friends, um, welcome to June, yay! I apologize I didn't get May's readings done. Some of you were kind of like sending emails or leaving comments on different videos saying, what the fudge, where is May? Um, and if you follow on the Facebook page, that's a better place to keep updated with what's going on. I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, if, for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know that I used to be super, super consistent and like ahead of the game. Um, but the last like year and a half to two years has been complete upheaval and like just crazy shit in my life. So I'm going to make a video about that later because there's like a lot of spiritual like lessons and things in that that a lot of people will benefit from, including um, like, you know, how to predict and navigate your way through different things that come up if you were to read your own tarot cards and like, anyway whatever. The thing I wanted to say before we started reading is that moving forward, like after June, yeah, I would say like probably about August of this year, everything, all the ducks should be in a row and things will get back on track so you can look forward to that. Uh, but in advance of that, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are intending to purchase um, video readings, throughout like the first two weeks of June, there might be a delay in those. I um, am having a nose surgery, my nose is broken and it's causing sinus infections a lot. So I'll have like this big thing on my face. And so um, like a little, uh, what do they call that, a splint? And then maybe some black eyes after that. So I don't know how up for video reading I'm going to be uh, straight out the gate. But I will be keeping on top of email readings and phone readings. So there's that. Um, now, this month, what the reading looks like for you guys is what you can expect in work with your money. Because sometimes those are related, sometimes they're not. In your love life, whether you're single, coupled, or in an on-again, off-again relationship, like an undefined relationship. Maybe it's new and it's not Facebook official. Maybe, um, you know, you're polyamorous. Maybe you're the other woman in a uh, relationship or, I guess, the other man, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a sugar daddy situation or a, su a sugar baby situation. What do they call it when the guy, leave it in the comments if you know, when the guy, is it a kept man? If it's the dude that has a sugar mama? Anyway, yeah, if you know, let me know because I'm curious. And then we're also going to be looking at, you know, just kind of socially, like what do your relationships look like or what do you need to be aware of for this month, um, whether that is friends or family kind of situations. We're going to talk about your lucky day, um, which chakras you need to work on, what is your crystal of the month, uh, so many things in these readings this month. So um, let's just get started with it. Hey Cancer, welcome to June. Um, maybe for some of you it's your birthday month, so yay. Uh, I just wanna start by saying your chakra of the month is your root chakra. And so when we talk about the chakra system, when we're working on them, it's typical, not in every case, but in most cases. You want to start from the bottom up, okay? So the root chakra is the base one, often associated with the color red or black. So that's your chakra of the month. So it's kind of, that chakra correlates to like your basic needs, you know, breathing, oxygen, food, shelter, you know, stuff like that. Okay, and then um, your lucky day is the 12th, and I just wanted to get that shit out of the way straight out the gate because I forgot about the lucky day in the Gemini video until the very, very end. Um, so let's get started and we'll go through everything else um, later. So first thing, work in June. They're saying, ooh, very um, interesting month as far as your emotions go. Now, Cancers obviously are kind of emotional people, right? But you might be feeling a lot in regards to your work. So maybe you have clients that really touch your heart. Maybe you're putting a lot of heart into what it is that you're doing. Um, maybe you know, you, I don't know, but you get what I mean. Um, they're saying that there's something going on at work where maybe not everybody else can see it or sense it, but you have this sort of knowing. Um, so you're, 
it's like obvious to you. Like you can't be tricked or deceived. So I don't know if this is that um, somebody tells a lie or steals. It's like that kind of energy. It's like lying and stealing. And you're the only one who like really catches on to it. Maybe your colleagues are like, no, no, that couldn't be possible. Uh, but you catch on to it. And so they say... Um, if that's the case, if you kind of sense something's going on, like maybe somebody is taking money out of the till or, you know, who, whatever, the sooner you act on it, the better, um, because it otherwise, basically, like if, if you have this awareness, even though other people might not, you can prevent this from becoming like a really big, bad problem. So this is especially important if you're a business owner and you have employees, if you have that awareness, figure out a way to try to prevent it or at least to capture it, like videotape it, something. Because um, not everybody else is going to notice or be aware of that. That's very specific. So <laughs> for everybody else, um, because, you know, that's the problem with general readings is that certain pieces might just be for like a certain cancer who's watching. And say, they say that that portion of the reading is for cancer bosses. Okay, so people who have your own businesses or like you're a manager or something like that, they say it's not if you work for somebody. Okay, anyway, so for the rest of you cancers, they're saying that this month in the workplace, be careful with your written communication. So with your emails, with your text messages, stuff like that, watch for typos. Um, a little bit like a Mercury retrograde, right? Like you want to double check your spelling. You want to make sure you're sending things to the right person because they say there could be some misfortune that way. Um, so having that awareness is huge. Remember that throughout the month. Um, but then they also say like in the workplace, this is an awesome month for uh, manifesting things that you want. So if there's something that you really desire, you know, and it could be way down the road, but some big dream or goal related to work, they're like, hey, guess what? These things are achievable and, you know, things can be even better than you probably thought possible. So think about what it is that you hope for, what it is that you want, what it is that you wish for, because it's almost as though the wheels are turning like behind the scenes to for the universe to bring you these things that you want. A very good um, kind of start to a new path of a lot of wonderful things in your work life. Um, so that being said, I'm going to kind of jump away. We'll get back to money and love and all that stuff in a minute, but it really corresponds with one of the other cards that I pulled for you guys this month. And um, actually, too many of them. But before I get to the... Okay, so the card that I basically was talking about that I wanted to deviate for a moment for just because it correlates so strongly to work in case you don't make it to the end of the video. But you should watch the whole video because... Sometimes things jump back and forth, right? Is this one where it talks about surrender. But before I get there, I want to kind of set the tone with some other themes for your reading in general for the month of June. So they're saying everything goes in cycles, right? Cycles is one of the theme. And so they say the cycles of life are endlessly turning and returning us um, back to source. And so, like, obviously, we kind of know that. Like, every time something changes, like, a new adventure starts, and we learn a lesson there, and then that's done, and then we have another new beginning, right? Um, but the groundwork that I kind of wanted to lay for that next card is this one here where it talks about resistance, but you see again all of these circles, all of these cycles. And so they say the power of the human spirit can't be restricted. Um, you have a lot of power, but sometimes we're our own worst enemies, right? And we resist things when we're trying to achieve them and we don't even know that we're subconsciously doing that. So that's what I wanted to tell you when I get over to this card of... Um, surrender okay so I did mention that the chakra we want to work on is that like day-to-day -day life kind of stuff our basic needs right but this one correlates to the spirit realm um, our third eye chakra and our kind of knowing which we know that we have um, the way that the card started and related in relation to work stuff um, but as well as our fears okay because we know that fears are um, what kind of create a resistance right and so they're like just surrender to the universe like try to let go of your fears because when it comes to numerology here we have an ending at nine and a new beginning at one okay this is talking about cycles again and our fear is that resistance energy that we put out so maybe we know what would be good for us 
we know what we want in our career or in our love life or, you know, whatever. We know what we're hoping for because we're talking about work. And, um, but we have this sort of fear that we can't obtain it. Or maybe we're chasing it so hard that we're creating a desperation energy instead of just surrendering to kind of allowing the law of attraction to like bring us these things. If you're in the right vibration, things are just going to flow to you. And so um, when we try to control or dictate the way that blessings flow to us, we create a resistance or fear energy as though it's not even you know possible, which is going to bring me to another one of those cards I was going to um, read for you at the end, but it's just kind of playing out this way straight out the gate where um, it's saying signs from heaven. So thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence. But here's the thing. we The people who see feathers or find pennies or, you know, start seeing numbers are the people who believe that, you know, the spirit world wants to talk to them, that they trust, you know, God, the universe, angels, whatever, whatever it is that you believe in the universe, that there is like a higher power that's working like to help us out. But if you don't believe that, if you don't trust in that energy, you don't pick up on those signs or those synchronicities, right? Which is why like I remember as a child being like questioning. Um, so like I grew up Lutheran and it never really made sense to me. Um, and like if it works for you, like Christianity, awesome. But for me, it was like I didn't understand. I couldn't wrap my head around certain things. One of many things, the Holy Trinity. Hi, Dad, it's me, you, right? When Jesus is praying, it doesn't. But, I mean, whatever. I don't want to have that kind of theology conversation because at the end of the day, if you believe in something, we're all believing in the same thing, okay? It doesn't matter. Um, we can all just do it our own way. So let's not do that in the comments. <laughs> you comment on anything else. Just like, I don't want to have a fight. This is like good vibes, right? So what I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, I remember as a child kind of struggling with that. And like when I would pray, I would be like, okay, well, God, if you're real, you know, put a uh, bird's nest outside of my bedroom window when I'm sleeping. And then I'd wake up and I'd look out the window and I wouldn't see it. But it's like what I didn't realize until I was older is if I didn't have faith, I would not be asking a higher power to prove something to me. So signs like that don't work. You have to give the trust and the faith first. And then when you're really in that vibration, okay, when you trust the universe, God, a higher power, whatever it is you believe in, then all of a sudden you start noticing those synchronicities more and more and more. I know that to be true because that's my own life, but it's the life of many people, not just tarot readers and, you know, spiritual peeps. So anyway, um... Pay attention to signs, but you don't necessarily have to ask for them. However, if you're already in that flow where signs are given to you or shown to you, if you're already awakening your psychic abilities, you can ask questions and receive that way. So for example, if you're clairaudience and you're right-handed, um, you might hear, you could say like, hey, is this a good idea or not? Check in with spirit. And they might put it like a high-pitched sound in your right ear. Or um, if they put it in your left ear, that's a no. So yes versus no, right? Stuff like that. There's different tips and tricks. Everybody experiences their psychic awareness and their development differently. Um, but that's just one of a billion examples. So for everybody generally that are cancers, pay attention to signs, but don't necessarily ask for them if you don't believe in them, right? Because it doesn't work that way. But if you do truly have belief and trust, if you can surrender to... Um, I mean, basically, what they're saying is all you need to know in any area, but we're talking, we were talking about work, but in any area, work, money, friends, love, you have to just know what you want and then trust that it's going to come to you in the right time in the right way, releasing or surrendering those fears and just trusting, okay? Because you're creating otherwise delays in getting what you want. You're almost like self-sabotaging. So that's that resistance energy that I was talking about. Everything comes and goes in cycles. And so if we want to skip one of these lessons, one of these circular like things, um, all we got to do is kind of just like release our fears. There's always going to be lessons. That's part of our soul contract of coming to earth from wherever the hell we used to be, right? But the point is is that like certain ones we seem to learn again and again and again and it's because we're not just like kind of accepting it we're resisting it we're pushing it away and that's how we end up in those negative toxic cycles and patterns i hope that makes sense that was kind of long-winded okay 
what's going on with your money in June? They say um, certain things that maybe you wanted to have wrapped up aren't completely wrapped up. Maybe you were trying to pay off a debt, or maybe you did, but they didn't cash the check, that kind of a thing. Um, they're saying like, and this can really confuse you, you might have a hard time budgeting this month or trying to figure out where do I put certain um, amounts of money. You know, like there's a lot of things that I want to spend on. Where where do I put my money? Let's say, for example, you took out a loan to um, renovate your home and it's like, well, I know I want to do the kitchen and the living room and the upstairs bathroom, but it's like, where do you start? <laughs> and so it's like, do you put a little bit of money here, 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 here? Because it, then you have like everything is chaos instead of do, handling one thing at a time and like getting shit done. You're going to feel maybe a little bit scattered when it comes to your money. And so they say like, be really, really honest with yourself and honest with other people as to um, what is probably the least chaotic the least dramatic way of doing things. So if you wanted to rush into something and just like get it all done at once, maybe not the best plan, at least in June, perhaps in July, it'll be a different scenario, but they're saying, um, whatever your priorities are, maybe don't spread yourself so thin, focus on one thing, um, that would be easiest to wrap up or to conclude. Okay, so maybe you have like credit card debt and you have tax debt. They're saying like just focus on paying one of those credit cards off this month instead of like trying to put like shit everywhere. Does that make sense? That's kind of the energy for your money this month. Um, as far as love goes, if you're a single cancer, they say, um, you know, don't be a little bit guarded about who you give your time, your energy to this month. They're saying, um, because otherwise it will really very much deplete you. Um, so cancers are kind of that way, right? I, I see you more as turtles than crabs. Maybe crabs have the same behaviors and I just don't know that because I don't really, honestly, I think that the ocean is like filled with aliens. I think it's really creepy. <laughs> so um, maybe crabs behave very much the same way that turtles do. I don't know. But I kind of picture cancers as turtles. Like you stick your head out. You know, you socialize, you like do your stuff and you swim even in water sometimes, but you're also good in practical, re practical reality walking on land. But then sometimes you just got to go back in your shell, retreat, kind of like gain up your um, energy to go back out there and stick that head out. And the thing is, is um, it's kind of like extroverted introverts, right? Like that's, they can go out and be super social and nobody knows that they're really quite introverted, but then they need that like decompression time to themselves. So um, with that sort of energy, I think that's kind of what they're saying for those of you who are single cancers is you don't necessarily um, want to overextend yourself, overgive of your energy, your time, your love. They say like, it's not like it's going to make you feel more anxious. It's not like anything bad's going to happen, but it's just a little too much. Um, they say, yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Like, if you have, an, like, a really social June, like, you're not welcoming catastrophe, okay? But they're just saying, you know, this time you really need it. And you'll really enjoy, personally, that inner reflection time for yourself. It somehow has more... Um, it's almost like it has more wisdom and more comfort and more like warm fuzzies and like certainty as far as like your own life questions go. <laughs> like if you're trying to discover your own like life purpose, it'll be easier for you if you're taking that introspective time more this month than maybe typically and being aware of how much energy you're expending on other people. So if you're expending a lot of energy on people, it's nothing dramatic. It's just like this month for some reason has some sort of special benefit. So I don't actually do astrology. It's interesting to me and I see a lot of correlation, but honestly, I just think it's like, for me, it's too overwhelming. It's a lot of shit to learn and ain't nobody got time for that, right? So if you are an astrologer, that's like one of your hobbies, you know a lot about it. Maybe you, or you heard something, you watched a really sweet YouTube video on, you know, cancer astrology, maybe you can let us know in the comments what that might be about. There might be some astrological force there. Um, the other thing is that they're saying, you know, in regards to your love life, you should probably, this is a really good month to ask other people to maybe set you up. 
I, that can be uncomfortable, right? Like, unless your friends really, really know your taste, you'll be like, oh man, now I have to spend time with this weird person. Or maybe you have a crush and your friends happen to know them and you're like, hey, could you set this up so that um, this person's invited to the same place that we're going? <laughs> could be that sort of a thing. But ask other people to help you in your love life, however um, you see fit. But they're just saying, you know, be really honest with yourself when you think you might be overextending, um, you know, with your time and your energy. Maybe you're trying to like, hit the ground running like on those dating apps and they're like, you know, make sure that you're taking time for yourself too. Don't burn yourself out. Nothing bad will happen if you do, but nothing really super fucking awesome and amazing will either. Well, this is a general reading. Maybe for some of you, something amazing will. But um, for those of you who are coupled cancers, they are saying make sure that you're open to receiving love in the way that your partner gives it to you. So if you know your partner's love language, it's good to know. <laughs> make sure that you're observant of that. They're saying like, this is not really a challenging month for you. Like, it's not like anything is hard or difficult between you and your partner. But what they're saying is like, you might not be thinking about where you want this relationship to head. Where do you want it to go? Maybe you're kind of in that mindset of like, okay, we're married now. So, you know, that's the end. <laughs> All right. And you're not like really setting new goals um, for the relationship. And so they're saying, we want you to like really feel on that. Not think about it logically, but feel on it. You know, how do you want to feel in your relationship? So you can start to manifest that and welcome it into your relationship. They're saying um, for a lot of you, this is going to be about um, making things more fun or more exciting. Having a more, um, like trying new things in the bedroom even. And they're saying those are things that maybe you don't want to think about. Some of you, some of you are like, oh man, I don't even want to think about that because... Maybe you're afraid to bring it up with your partner or you don't want to view yourself like you might shame yourself for trying to be like a sexual being. Um, but they're saying like these anxieties are fucking silly. Like let them go because we're coming back then to that. Where did that card go? They're like, dude, old of end ways, new beginnings that are awesome. They're also like spiritually um, aligned, right? They have a point. They have a purpose. So surrender to that and let go of your fears. Are you afraid your partner's going to judge you? They're already committed, right? Okay, so, and if the, if your partner is very judgmental of you all the time, they're a shitty-ass partner, let them go. That's like emotional abuse, guys. And so, moving on from that, those of you in undefined relationships, they're like, some of you will be walking away from something you put a lot of time, love, and effort into. So maybe you're the other woman and you like just finally said, oh man, I don't think this guy's like really going to leave his wife. Or maybe you're in a polyamorous relationship and you're like, I'm exhausted. This is like so much expenditure of energy and time and love. Um, they say that for some of you, this is because somebody lied to you because they hurt you. And um, for others of you, it's just more like, I don't have the strength to continue to defend myself against. Remember how we just mentioned with coupled um, relationships that perhaps some of you are in a emotionally abusive relationship. They're saying with this one, like for those of you who are in undefined relationships, if that's the case, you know, where you're constantly defending yourself, um, you're just like, eh, you know, or maybe, like I said, an undefined relationship could also be something that is on again, off again. And then you're like, okay, well, you know, if we're coming back together now, well, you know, who were you talking to before? Or like, who are you dating and why would you do that? And you're like, we weren't together. It doesn't matter. I don't have to defend any of that. I don't have to explain where I was or where I'm going. Kind of an issue. And that's very specific. So for the rest of you in undefined relationships, what's the energy? And they're like, well, think about what it is that you want for your future. You don't have to know exactly what it is that um, it should look like or how it will feel necessarily or, um, you know, how it will benefit you. But just like think kind of in broad strokes, like what would be exciting to me? What would be fun to me? What would I really enjoy? And then just, again, surrender, let the universe take that so that it can deliver it to you in surprising ways. Sometimes, you know, when we try to dictate how things come to us, um, we get pissed off because they don't come to us because that wasn't the universe's plan. Even though it was the plan to get us what we wanted, it just comes to us in a different way, 
right? Um, sometimes what we get when we just like surrender, relax, relinquish that control and allow things to flow to us is better than what we would have created on our own, you know? I mean, I think Oprah, she just probably wanted to be a news reporter in the first place, right? Like, and everybody was telling her no, and she didn't try to dictate how that happened, and now she's like the most famous media person ever. So that's maybe not the best analogy, but I think you can get what I'm saying here. They're saying, you know, like any sort of fear or anxiety or like anything like that, like, oh man, this could go wrong, let it go. Let it go. You're too smart for that. Like, you're very calculated. You think about things when you're in that little hermit shell, in your little crab shell. You've already thought things through. Like, if there's anything that's going to go wrong, it was nothing you could control anyway. So, nothing to worry about. Um, as far as social relationships go, like friendships, family, stuff like that, they're saying, um, here is where you want to exert any sort of control in the month of June. They're saying that, um, you know, having that fun, happy-go-lucky, like spontaneity kind of energy, like, oh, anything can happen. Woo, let's go on an adventure is like the right energy to be in with friends. Um, but you being the one in control, inviting them on adventures. They're saying like, you won't be disappointed with the results of that at all. So, that's cool. It sounds like a very enriching month. They're saying, um, as far as social stuff goes, your friends or your family members could somehow direct a source, a new source of income to you. So maybe you have a hobby. Maybe you like to knit hot pads or something. And then they start mentioning it to their friends. And then before you know it, people are emailing you saying like, hey, can I place an order? Or maybe you have a business and people are referring to you like crazy and it's because they have this joyful like um, social time or because you reached out and you contacted them and it reminds them, oh, you know what, so-and-so was asking like if I knew anybody who does hair and then you know, you're a cosmetologist and so you get that referral. They're saying um, some of you might not feel like really um, like you want to reach out to others and say, hey, do you want to get a drink with me? Do you want to, you know, hang out on Tuesday and we don't have to make plans as to what? We'll just go on an adventure. It's like some of you don't feel that way. But try to push yourself this month to do that because it does have big rewards for you. And they're saying um, there's really nothing to be afraid of there. Like you kind of know that you sort of need that. Okay. Now, the last few things that I wanted to talk about was your color energy, which is plum, and you use this through the third eye, and this will um, decalcify that third eye chakra, but what it does is it helps you to overcome your challenges. This is about balance that you, you know, maybe thought you had, and then something new comes along, and it creates some sort of discord or stress, and so it's like just, it's going to help you to release you know, because it's overcoming your challenges, it's going to help you release that kind of energy that we were talking about before. Now, um, look at that. We have orange as the fear and then purple through the third eye. So asking your spirit guides, you know, for um, paying attention to signs, like the spirit world here is trying to communicate with you. Everybody is psychic, okay? Um, it's just a matter of do you know how to tap into that or use, and use it or not. And so as that third eye opens, you're going to start to kind of notice your blessings. And so if you're already starting to do that, if you're on this awakening path, then you're going to notice these signs and um, hopefully take some sort of comfort and in that and trust in the universe and then be able to relinquish those fears. Because this is what we are, we want to rely on spirit to help us overcome any challenges that come up for us. And so... Um, with this one, you know, they say that devotion, dedication are important with the plum energy. You can eat plums to bring it out, plum lipstick, you know, imagining that color right through your third eye chakra. But they're saying, you know, remembering that everything has a purpose or a point. Like everything we go through is to teach us something. Um, so the affirmation for this one is use... Um, Divine Spirit, please use the plum ray to guide me through any challenges I may experience with ease, grace, and softness. And so essentially, it's kind of like a prayer saying, hey, um, can you guys help me out? Like, I want to get th through things, like, as non-dramatic, as unscathed as possible. Like, I want a life of ease. Honestly, that's my best life hack. Yeah. Um, when I remember to gratitude journal for ease or to pray for ease, 
my life is like a million times better. And I should have done that this week because I was a huge, ungrateful, whiny bitch yesterday. Um, hindsight's 2020, right? Love all, love is all there is, right? So remembering that um, anything that is shitty is just that there's not, there's a lack of love attached to it, right? Um, darkness itself is just a space devoid of light, okay? So um, maybe, I don't think I need to explain that further. This is just important to know. Love is all there is. It's the, mo it's the most powerful force on the universe, right? <laughs> um, so the more love we can put into things, the more love we put into our friendships, into our um, romantic relationships, into our work, because we already said you're going to be in your fields, into our money relationships, because, you know, with money, um, that's also an energy. The more that we love our money, the more we receive it. Um, love is really all there is, and that's kind of your theme for the month. I love you so much. Have the best month ever. I forgot to tell you about your crystal of the month. It's Jade. So um, on some occasions you might see a little bit speckled like that, but more often you'll see Jade um, in a lighter tone like this or a darker one. Um, a good place to find it locally sometimes is like an Asian marketplace might sell little Jade Buddhas um, for good luck and things like that. You could get it from your local crystal shop. If you don't have one and you'd like to get one from me, I would love to mail you one, and those come with a video playlist as well as a printout of like how to care for your crystal, um, which angels are associated to it, and then the uses for it. So the reason why I bring this up for you, why it's your power crystal of the month for June um, cancers, is this is going to help you um, with that preservation of love feeling. And you know, we ended the reading before I realized I forgot to tell you the crystal of the month with this card saying love is all there is, right? Love needs to penetrate everything if we want to have like a really amazing, happy life. Um, but it helps us to love ourselves as well. It helps us to um, do compa like inward compassion, but compassion for others. It helps us to feel inspired. Um, it helps us to be spontaneous, which we mentioned is important in your social relationships, your relationships with your friends, with your family members, stuff like that. Helps you to solve problems, to take actions with luck. Um, most of the time people use jade for luck and prosperity um, and for long life, but it helps us with our intuition. Remember we talked about all that third eye energy that we have going on here, opening up and awakening that. Um, and it soothes any irritation that we have. It helps us to connect to the spirit world, helps you to balance your metabolism. I mean, isn't that freaking awesome? It does so many other things. So you get like the full list um, if you get one from me. But, I mean, you could also just do a quick Google search, too, whatever is clever. Love you a lot. See you in July. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!